you men from out of town and Bob just from a half a mile away. Thanks very much for coming on the At Random set to discuss some of the problems in our country, society today. Stokely, you're credited with being the author of the term black power, which is so much in our dialogue these days. And you have defined it as economic, social, and political power, and not the uh, tone of opprobrium which some people cast into the definition. Did you author it, and uh, what do you think it'll eventually amount to? Well, I didn't author it. The term has been around the black community for quite some time. Uh, it's, it's prevalent in the writings of uh, Dr. Du Bois. Of course, Richard Wright wrote his book, Black Power. Mr. <coughs> Lerone Bennett, in Ebony Magazine, the last six months, has been running issues entitled Black Power, so that I couldn't be credited with authoring it. Well, didn't you, uh, Mr. Carmichael, didn't you really use it to con in considerable extent in the march, uh, well, the recent did. march down in Mississippi? Yes, I certainly did. And hasn't it been construed, whether correctly or not, as indicating uh, almost the antithesis uh, to white power? Uh, a great deal of misgivings, even in the civil rights movement. I'm thinking of... Uh, Dr. King, for example, who has some misgivings of its use. Don't you think that, uh, that uh, it has been misconstrued? It certainly has been. The people who have been finding it have been the uh, white press. They didn't give anybody a chance to define it. It was a new term. I mean, as a newspaper man, I assume that newspaper business is really advertisement in this country. May I ask you a question? Uh, Mr. Carmichael talks about black power. And I noticed the Negro movement is regularly talking about getting at the white power structure. And they make no bones about what they think about the white power structure. Do you mean the same thing by black power as you condemn in the white power structure? No, I think we need black power to be able to stop the oppression and exploitation that the white power system has been using. Well, Mr. Carmichael, I, su surprisingly enough, I came here prepared to argue with you, and the first thing I picked up was a copy of Jet Magazine for this week, and I see a quote from you with which I'm forced to agree. So Stokely Carmichael, chairman of SNCC, when asked by TV's Mike Douglas why integration was working, he said, because white people in America don't want it. And uh, I'm heartily in agreement with that sentence. That's exactly what I think is the problem. And uh, in order to get black power, therefore, you are going to have to use force, because I agree with you. The white people don't want integration. That's why they have to pass all these laws. And all the evasion in the world and circumlocution on the word, uh, what black power means, uh, won't hide the fact that the only way you're going to get what you want is by force. Well, that depends if, if black power means integration. I don't see it as that. It means that black people can control the neighborhoods in which they live, politically, economically, and socially. Well, Mr. Carmichael, may I ask a question? Don't you, wouldn't you agree that you have alienated a lot of white people in the civil rights movement? No, I would agree that white people have alienated themselves from the student. Why have they alienated themselves? I think it's because of their own racism, because they're afraid of a slogan like black power. You say that we're so powerful that we can alienate them because of a slogan like black power. But do you want them in your movement? You've, you've been quoted uh, several times as saying, indicating at least that you don't want white no. persons to take part in your movement. I don't see where we've said that. I said that we don't want white people to lead the movement. Certainly, we intend to lead the movement. Uh, well, how does we don't it make think people that white people can organize in the black community anymore because it only further perpetuates the theory of white supremacy. That is, the whites are the only ones who are capable to do anything for black people. Well, will you will you agree that a lot of a lot of white persons have have put their reputation on the line, their lives indeed? Schwerner and Goodman. I would never. I would be there. Father Morris Rowe. Uh, I certainly would uh, be the first These people one to have been in the vanguard of the I civil agree. rights movement. One hundred percent. Now, uh, they must, for some reason, believe that that uh, this is not a uh, a palatable uh, uh, slogan, if you will. Uh, well, are those the people, the ones who have dropped out? I don't know. Oh. May I say something? Mrs. Schwerner, the contributions, uh, for example. Uh, uh, the New York Times, uh, the wire services have quoted these stories, that uh, your contributions are way down. M many, much of your contribution comes from the white community. May I suggest that the, the Jewish papers, which I have been reading diligently, one of them I have here, points out that the Jews are being asked to drop civil rights rightly. That's what's the, the Jewish Post and Opinion here. 
And I suggest to Mr. Carmichael and to the board here, or whatever this may be called, that what's happening is the Jews have been promoting Martin Luther King and his type of mixing, and uh, Malcolm X began a nationalist black movement with which I was forced to agree because they wanted to move out of here. And I think what's happening is the Jews are abandoning Mr. Carmichael and his sort of movement, and they're trying to push Mr. King. And I think Mr. Carmichael rec represents the black masses, whereas, uh, just as Malcolm X did, whereas the, uh, Mal uh, the Martin Luther King type movement rec uh, represents the, uh, the middle class Negroes. I don't know how Mr. Carmichael, if I may interrupt, you, you may see right here an indication of where uh, uh, Mr. Rockwell is aligning you as the antithesis of his movement. A white supremacy movement. Well, I think he is. A white power movement. I uh, think he this, is. No question about it. Uh, may I finish? Excuse me. This, uh, this in itself, tends to taint your uh, your uh, your efforts. It depends. There upon are people who are uh, who, who would think in in these very terms. Well, it depends upon who's projecting that. Now we don't project that as black supremacy. I don't agree with what uh, Mr. Rockwell says. I think that Dr. King does, in fact, represent a great segment within the black community. Well, you stood at a press conference earlier today and you said that you are you are uh, going to align your group or at least join up with uh, the black Muslims. Now, first they all, are black nationalists, they're separatists. All, they're not called black Muslims, they call themselves Muslims. Second of all, we said that we're going to move in a black community to talk to all black groups and we're not going to let anybody who's white tell us what groups to talk with or what they represent. We're going to understand firsthand what those groups are saying, and we will see where we can work with those groups together. Well, you know, I, Mr. Madigan, I think that even though I think eventually Mr. Carmichael and I and people like him are going to confront each other shooting, I'm again forced to agree with Mr. Carmichael. I think that black people should lead their own movement. I don't think white, white people should have anything to do with it. Uh, if it is a black movement, it should be led by black men, and I agree with Malcolm X, and if they're going to move in that direction, I would be forced to agree with them providing we can eventually find some solution short of one of us killing the other. Why would you make a statement just fraught with such foreboding as to say eventually we'll be shooting at each other? Is well, it's already happened last week. I know, I know, I know, but is that an adult way to approach a big problem, a basic problem of our time? It's a historical way, Mr. Madigan, the way when... Well, history is changed by individuals of goodwill. Mr. Madigan, we took this country away from the Indians. We didn't talk them out of it. We took it away from them, and we killed most of them. There's hardly any left. Mr. Rockwell, what do you believe in? I believe in my people. I believe in this country and my what people. What people are they? The white Christian people that built this great country are the ones that I believe in. Mr. Carmichael believes in his black people, and well, I'm, I'm, a white, I'm with him. I'm a white Christian. But you're not with me yet. Well, and I, I am... Well, you try going down to the west side during one of the riots, you'll find yourself aligned with me very quickly. Oh, may I ask you something, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Daniel Burroughs, uh, who was a member of your movement, is that correct? That's correct. Was Jewish. That's right. And he killed himself, if I recall, after it was disclosed in the New York Times that he was indeed Jewish. That's correct. Now, one of Mr. One of Mr. Burroughs' stands was to openly promote genocide. Well, I, I never openly went along with that. Genocide. I do not go along with that one bit. When uh, I, how, what is your stand on? My stand is that anybody... And for viewers who don't understand genocide, this means the mass murder of people, of a group of people. This is what was happened. This anybody, is what happened you in you the Hitler's the Germany. My answer is this. Anybody who attacks me or this great America that my people helped to build, I'm going to attack them back. This is what, in essence, the Negroes are saying. They are being attacked, and in some cases it's true. And who I'm, is attacking your country? The Negroes are attacking... How are they attacking looting? your country? Well, they're attacking my the, my police forces. They're attacking the, uh, the state troopers and shooting at firemen and policemen. But that doesn't represent my country. I don't know what Would you say that 26 million Negroes are doing this? Could not yeah. some individuals, Negroes, be doing it that are completely separated from people of good intent that are attempting to solve these this racial problems? This may be, problems? sir. The Soviet Union only has something like 10% in the Communist Party, and yet well, they, they blow us all up. Well, they control it. I don't think the, the, the parallel is the same at all. Sir, if you go into the Negro community in some of these real tough Negro areas where I think Mr. Carmichael is looked up to and where I think Malcolm X was looked up to, as I looked up to him, you will find that they don't distinguish between white liberals and white uh, race mixers or white... Uh, hate mongers, as they call me, they're after you if you've got a white skin. And I think that this is the inevitable development of what has been going on in our country for all these years. These liberals have been pushing and pushing, and eventually the Negroes have no other reaction than what they're doing. Well, well if that were the, true, if that were true, why do you think that is so, Mr. Rockwell? That the Negroes are doing what they're doing? Yes. I think the Negroes are doing what they're doing for exactly the same reason that you have a tribal war, or that we took away the country.